I'm Kathy Lee from Rochester, Minnesota, and this is our Mr. Elvis that we adopted from Safe Haven Pet Shelter. We went to the shelter, and I wasn't planning on getting a cat, and every time I turned around, he was there. So he picked me out. <laughs> she called me to say that there was a bump on his leg that they'd been watching for about a week. When I got here, it was quite large. She said it was just growing very, very fast. It was so large. It was like a, it was like a tennis ball um, tumor. And I mean, it started growing and it, it was just a rapid. So we did a fine needle aspirate on this mass of his right rear leg with a rush for the sample and it came back as a sarcoma and it looked like a very active sarcoma. So Kathy and I talked about what would be best for Elvis. Being a house call practitioner, I use a lot of my colleagues here in town for referrals. So I send her up to Dr. Husbands at Blue Pearl. I'm Brian Husbands and I'm a veterinary oncologist. With the type of cancer that Elvis had, he had a, a connective tissue ca cancer, which is called a sarcoma, on the side of his leg. Um, it was located pretty high up near the pelvis, and that was probably the biggest portion of, the, of his challenge in that uh, attempting to try to treat this would be challenging in the setting of um, the complications associated with the surgery, trying to just remove the mass itself. Uh, after meeting with Dr. Jackson, we ultimately felt like he was an excellent candidate to have the amputation of the leg as well as the removal of the intestinal mass. This is a cancer that's uh, typically very what we call locally invasive, so it invades the local tissues. And his amputation was kind of a little special in the fact that we had to take half of the pelvis with it too, which again, shocking to the owner, shocking to many people. I was really freaked out about that and I did a lot of crying. <laughs> but we thought if it would save his life, that we, would, that we would do that. It's a process, and I think a really important process to talk to the owner about that because, uh, you know, the shock. Oh my gosh, he's gonna lose a leg. Um, How is he gonna do? Um, and so many times I talk to people about, you know, they, they still have one, you know, still have three legs and we only have two. Animals adapt very well to, you know, having a leg amputated. And so I said, okay, I wasn't gonna lose Elvis. Kathy's wonderful. I mean, she understood and understood that Elvis was the right cat because his personality is fantastic. So um, it was definitely worth a try for her to do this. and potentially have a cure. Our goal is to maintain quality of life. Without therapy, an expectation for survival probably been, would have been weeks to maybe a couple of months. His healing was great. I mean, he did really well. So we'd, we'd taken him up for a checkup and stuff like that with Dr. Jackson. And he was recovering really well. The hardest part was to get him to eat. He, he was in a cage for a while down here in the living room and and I slept by him for probably a month before <laughs> on a mattress on the living room floor, so I was there. He went from not wanting to eat a whole lot to, to the point where we're trying to control a little bit of his eating because <laughs> he's getting a little bit on the heavier side. If you weren't having to watch him move, because you can see a three-legged cat has to hop, you wouldn't know that anything had ever been wrong with Elvis. His quality of life is wonderful. The fact that Kathy did put him through the surgeries has bought him wonderful years of life.